here's another wonderful review. This is one of Hornby's very latest products. It's the new late BR Princess Coronation class. It's a William Stanley FRS number 46256. Now this is a very interesting one. Um, Hornby have just completely retooled their original Duchess design, interestingly, because they brought out a couple of Duchesses a uh, year and a half ago or so um, back, which was quite a good design, um, but they have updated it and brought it a little bit forward from the original uh, the original design. Um, but this is not any type of the Duchess class. Now, the Duchess class or the Princess Coronation class is a very has a very interesting history. Um, they were built by, well, designed by William Stanier as the prime express passenger mode of power for the Midland region. Um, but publicity dictated that they build some streamlined versions, which Stanley wasn't particularly happy about, uh, which were intended to beat the A4s and all that. And they may well have done, because they had an extra cylinder and they were quite a lot bigger than the A4s, but they never got the chance to prove it. And um, originally they built five streamlined ones, and like this, and uh, five normal ones. And then, of course, the streamlined ones after the war were uh, stripped back to their original features and they had slightly sloped fronts and a cu couple of other differences. Um, but the last two that were built were modified by Ivert, um, who we know is uh, another Midland designer that took on after Stania. And he introduced a few a few different modifications, like the rear, tra um, the rear trading pony truck here, um, a couple of differences to the drafting, and a few bits like that. And uh, this is one of them, quite fittingly named after Stanley himself. Um, and I was very happy that Hornby brought, decided to bring this one out, as I didn't know a lot about it, but of course I, my interest grew after I first saw the uh, the release for the model. I ordered it back in February when it was released, when it was uh, announced, and it's arrived today, which is absolutely fantastic. And it's of course in the late BR crimson with the red overhead warning flashes, which I think looks fantastic. Um, and this particular loco is very interesting because it's was the last survivor of its class and it lasted right until the end and was used on a lot of, on the Midland region at least, and was used on a lot of enthusiast specials etc. Um, there were plans to extend the life of the class and uh, throw them over to the, I think it's the Aberdeen route that the A4s were working towards the end of their lives but they realised that because of all the crew training costs and things like that that were going to be involved it sadly wasn't economic. So at the 1963 tail end that this one was withdrawn and uh, there are many great reference photos for other people who are wishing to model it online. And um, I've followed the sort of production of this particular model, and they've matched the paintwork to original samples of that BR colour. I think that's absolutely fantastic. That's a real attention to detail that Hornby have taken there. And it really is a cracking model. So um, obviously it's the uh, normal sort of block of ice, I suppose you'd call it, packaging. And wow, <laughs> yes, I know, <laughs> I thought it too, wow, it looks absolutely stunning. Now unfortunately, due to recent products by Hornby and Backman, like all of them, it's got a permanent tender co connection. You know, most locos you can live without it, but on stuff like bullets and castles and stuff like this, it, it really is annoying, but unfortunately, that's what most of them are doing now, so we're just going to have to live with it, but it looks superb. The crisp sort of golden lining really popping out there, and the yellow axle box covers really, really done to justice. And of course, the flashes at the front, the double chimney, it looks fantastic. And of course, you've got the slightly higher running plate on this one. Um, but one thing that I think Holman models have really improved on recently is the level of cab detail. I mean, I'll try and show it as best I can, but it's a bit tricky. Look at that, everything in there is painted. It's absolutely wonderful. I mean, you'd think on a big loco where you can't really see much into the cab, because it's obviously quite modern, that they wouldn't really bother. But they have, and they've really done it justice, and they look superb. Um, apparently the coal load does pop out. I'm hoping it does, because obviously I want to put real coal in there. Um, apparently it's got an, an, a mechanical or hydraulic or whatever it's called coal pusher in there, um, so I'd have to be mindful of that. I'm hoping it pops out because the coal level is very tall, um, and I might be able to shoehorn a crew in there, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, it was very expensive, but I, I think that one was worth justifying. There are some at the moment that really aren't due to, I think, inflation, Brexit, all of that rubbish. Um... So it is a bit of a tricky time to be buying models at the moment, 
but uh, if you shop around, you can get a good deal usually. I mean, on new stuff, it's always going to be that bit higher, but I think in this case, just look at it. I think it's a case for itself. It looks absolutely superb. Um, I was thinking about going to put a, a yellow cap stripe on the side, but um, I'm not really sure because it's obviously a smaller cab side plate and uh, when I did one on my Jubilee it wasn't a huge amount of fun as some of you may remember um, so I think I'll leave that till later but uh, the paintwork is absolutely superb because in a lot of the samples people were complaining about whether they weren't sure the red was quite right because in a lot of colour photos it looks quite sort of sun bleached and quite bright um, but a lot of that's due to sort of Locos being getting really dirty and then being cleaned off and there being grime stains and uh, colour film in those days not really doing it justice. Um, so yeah, they went to town and matched the original samples and it looks superb. And uh, you know me, I buy stuff from every region so it doesn't really matter. And I've got a slightly older Hornby Duchess which is uh, City of Bristol which is the BR Express Passenger Blue one. And uh, that's been quite a good model. Um, it's been through it's on the second set of valve gear now which was very kindly done by Matt, um, because we had a slight issue with the slide bars. Um, I think that was just due to it being in a not very convenient position when it was in storage for a while. Uh, but apart from that, it's a very good model. It does make a slight annoying, I'd say chafing noise. It kind of sounds like a chafing noise um, as it's going along, which is a little bit annoying, but you get none of that with this one. Um, this one's a very smooth runner. So I think the model can really speak for itself, to be honest. Um, and for once I've actually got, got around to doing a review on quite a, a recent model, because usually I'm quite behind. <laughs> um, there's a few extra details that come in the pack, obviously brake rodding, uh, vacuum pipes and all that, and so, I think cylinder drains, I'm not sure, um, which I'll probably add as well. But it looks fantastic. It pulls very well, it's very strong. Stronger than I was expecting, although my other one is quite strong as well, because um, you've obviously got a lot of weight pushing down on the driving wheels, which does help. Um, although I think the valve gear design does look the same, but they've done a superb job uh, retooling. They, do, they built it from the ground up and it looks fantastic. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. I shall insert some footage of it running here and I'll see you guys in the next review.